Hey, I'm Dale, this is Making with ML, and today I'm going to show you how this adorable little fox is the future of video game interactions. So imagine you're playing this sick new game where you decide to visit your local shopkeeper, but the shopkeeper doesn't have what you need. What if, instead of selecting from a list, you could ask for what you want in plain English, while the game uses machine learning to come up with a fitting response? Or what about making objects like cats and trees more interactive, action the game developers didn't even consider? Can ML expand the ways players interact with the game world? Today I sat down with Anna Kipnis, a senior creative technologist here with Stadia Games and Entertainment, and we talked about how machine learning can make game worlds more interactive. In my lifetime, we've seen games go from very low fidelity, like maybe two colors like Pong or something like that, to extremely realistic 3D. So like, you know, the visual development of games has really exploded. But I think that the interactivity um, is still really lagging behind. Like we're not that far uh, from where we started really. And so what I'm really interested in is kind of um, closing that gap. Why is it so difficult today to build a game that supports all of these rich, varied, and spontaneous interactions? Right now, the process is that the developers have to anticipate what all the questions that the player might ask of their world. Like, are they gonna like um, ask about this uh, specific weapon or something like that? What should happen as a response to that, right? So. Right at the moment, the the developers have to account for both the cool answers that they can have in the world, but also every single question that the player might ever have. What Semantic ML allows you to do is it allows you as a developer to focus mainly on the, on the interesting answers. The technology Anna is talking about here, Semantic ML, is a way of making sense of words or sentences with machine learning. Given a set of words, you can use a model to see which pairs are the most similar. For example, an ML model can tell you that a jetpack is more similar to a flying broomstick than it is to a garbage can or an apple. You can also use Semantic ML to help pick out likely responses to queries. So if I say, I would like some coffee, Semantic ML can tell me, here's a cup is a better response than, I hate your butt. Anna uses Semantic ML to describe her game worlds in plain English and then have a model infer how the world should behave. Let's take a look. I've labeled objects uh, using English that might be interesting for the fox to interact with. Uh, and in pink, you see the sorts of actions that the fox can do on these objects. It can predict, okay, of the list that you just gave me, if this is what the player said or did, it will be able to rank them from best to worst in terms of what is the most likely thing that somebody in conversation might have done. So uh, first, um, let's say hi to everyone. Um, it waves and then, Let's see if we can uh, have some coffee here. So it goes to pick so up the cup. So cute. <laughs> yeah, um, then it brings it to us. And the coolest thing is I didn't program the fox how to answer the, these questions or even you know what the heck coffee is. Um, I just labeled uh, that object that kind of looks like a cup. Um, I put a like a small mug, you know, that's just the English words and semantic ml kind of did everything else you can type sentences they don't even have to be particularly like spot on right like you can say sofa and it'll know it's couch i actually had the system rigged up so that you can just do them straight up in google sheets um and then you can try these really bizarre things like get really stoked i get excited cool make some money oh whoops the contradicting <laughs> because I type Monet uh, instead of money. And you know, this thing actually has cultural associations. And so it, yeah. you know, it understands that like Monet is a painter and so it conjured a painting. Um, so yeah, and so here now that it's spelled correctly, it creates a coin. What you just showed me, it's exactly what you're saying where like you as, even as the person that built the demo, it's still surprising and spontaneous to you. Exactly. This is like what's what's so magical to me is that there is like essentially a way to condense um, some of these patterns that people have in conversation, condense all of that human interaction into like a usable form that you can have in a game. Um, to me, that's like, it's essentially indistinguishable from magic. If you want to learn more about the tools that Anna used to build her demo and how you can use them, make sure you check out the blog in the link below. And let us know what you build in the comments. See you next time.